Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do some rapid review. So I have four knives here, and I have the Demco 8015 Custom. I have the Wingman EDC Ferris. I have the Real Steel G-Frame, and I have the Tucson TS129. So a couple of these are loaned in by Jared over at Neves Knives. Big thank you to Jared. His channel will be linked below. Please go check it out. Um, and these two were loaned in by Ian G EDC. Uh, he's on, uh, YouTube. I don't think he has a channel, but he's on YouTube in the comments a lot. He's a big supporter of the channel. I will link his Instagram down below. Please go check that out. So let's start with the 8015 because this one's the most sort of, uh, controversial or um i don't know how to put it exactly this is the one i flip-flop the most on because i got it unboxed it hated it right did the first impressions hated it then i sat and played with it a little bit and sort of messed around with it and um i've grown to understand it i don't quite love it or anything and i would never carry it yet I kind of get it now, sort of, um, but I think at this time, the, uh, 80, 20 just makes more sense considering it's about the same size and everything has a similar lock, except you don't have this whole back section basically exposed. You just have a tab as a lock up here and it just makes things a lot easier. It's not that similar, but it works similarly, and it just makes more sense to have a shark lock than this. But anyway, um, I actually do appreciate this now, and I, I still wouldn't really carry it, and I honestly really didn't. I mean, I carried it twice, and it was mostly around the house. Uh, it wasn't my favorite to carry, sorry. Um, so, you know, that is what that is, um, but anyway... Um, aesthetics, I think it's a good looking knife. Now, I hate the Joker theme. I would never have a knife Joker theme. And I don't know if Jared had it done that way or, uh, you know, that is kind of like channel color stuff. So that makes sense. Or if it was gifted or whatever. So, you know, to each their own, there's something on the blade here. Hang on a second. Um, but yeah, I think aesthetically it's a good looking knife. I love a good drop point. I do, uh, I do really like Andrew Demko's, uh, design language cause it's very simple, right? It's usually a simple drop point. Um, and then it's just a badass knife. That's usually what you're going to get. I don't know what is on this blade. Um, I didn't cut anything but paper, a package. I don't even think I cut cardboard with this. So this must be from Jared, but uh, it was like crusty, sort of. I don't know how I didn't notice that before. Maybe I did. I don't know. Anyway, I think I got it off there. But that was one of the problems right there. I almost just cut myself. So ergonomically, this is actually really comfortable in hand. This fits my hand really well, just like the 8020 did. Uh, it's basically the same handle shape, just a different design in terms of the lock. Um, just fits my hand absolutely perfectly back here. And then you have this choil to choke up on. Now I do want to note on this knife, that choil is kind of small. If you think about it, my finger just fits in, but I'm right on that edge right there. So if you have any fatter fingers, you're going to be cutting yourself pretty quick. So I do think that was kind of a miss. I don't know why it wasn't extended or something. Um, it obviously looks like a choil, so I'm guessing it's supposed to be used like that. But if you hold it kind of pulling back, it works pretty well. Uh, pinch grip is a little awkward on this knife just because of how big the sucker is. Um, and then getting the tip up. So for label cutting and such, it wasn't the greatest uh, knife to have or use for that. Uh, but this isn't the kind of knife I would really use for that anyway. This is kind of a hard use knife, you know what I mean? So this is meant to be used for, for that kind of stuff, which I don't really do. So I don't, you know what I mean? It kind of makes it where this knife isn't needed in my collection. And there's other things about it that I don't love. So it kind of just doesn't make sense for me personally. 
Um, again, that's kind of a theme here. So anyway, that's Ergos. Um, we kind of talked about cutting. I did very light cutting with it, and it did fine. Uh, it's got a good tip. Um, it's got a good edge. It's obviously a secondary edge from Jared. Um, and, you know, obviously it's going to be thick behind the edge. It's going to be a pretty robust stock, all that stuff. It's a it's a work knife, guys. It's an outdoor knife. It's a get shit done kind of knife. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, I don't have much experience with the cutting. It's a flat grind there. So this is an MG, I guess. Um, uh, but it's cool. Um, carry again, not much experience. Cause I, I just hate the size and shape of this thing. Um, uh, I don't like the clip because it lands like literally in this gap right here. And the blade is right there. It's just awkward as all hell. Um, it's a bit tight as well. Uh, but once you get it in pocket, it's good. It's solid. It's a heavy son of a gun. Um, I mean, for the size, it's actually not as bad. It's just heavy in general. Um, but for the size, it's good because you have G10 and then you have this whole hollowed out part. I mean, you got a lot of weight relief going on here. Um, so that's carry. Uh, it's not the best, you know, it's just big and sort of heavy and, and bulky. And I don't know if you'd reach in and ever like, you're not going to cut yourself, but it's just awkward with all the holes and shit. Um, carry sounds. So it's interesting. It, it's kind of subdued on the close, right? On the open, you get a good thwack because you're really thundering it out. I will say you kind of have to give it a little wrist to get it out. I mean, I can punch it out without wrist, but, you know, it takes a little bit of effort. It's better to just kind of crack it out, right? Uh, sounds are okay, like a 5 out of 10. Um, you'll see the centering is off, and this is after I adjusted the pivot and tightened it down, because this sucker was loose. It's still a little loose, um, but the tighter I went, the less action I got, you know. Uh, it has loosened up since then again, um, so the action's gotten a little better, but with that comes the centering issue, although I sort of recall it being more off-center, so maybe tightening it actually... Is, does the opposite. We could test it real quick. Uh, Looks like a T10, maybe. Try a T10. Now we got a little room in there. T15, perhaps. That's T8. I just used the T15s because I took apart my... Um, my... Rosie T9. So I know they're in here. Is this it? T20. There we go. Here it is. Ugh. T10. Is it a T10? Come on. No, it's got to be a T15. I just can't see it. It says T10, but this is a T10. Oh, it's a T8. I had the wrong bit. What's this then? T8. I don't know what's going on. What's this? T15. Okay, so yeah. The T15 does not need to be in there. T8 can go in here. T10 should be in here. Perfect. Okay, so sorry about all that. So here we go. T10, let's tighten it down. Can it be tightened? Yes. And there you go. It's centered up a good bit, right? But now we're stiff as all get out, right? So watch the centering. Uh, it's kind of stuck now. So let's see. Get a little bit of play, but I wonder if that... Let me just tighten it and see. Yeah, so the play goes away. It's just so weird that you have to, like, throw your blade down to 
you know, do stuff. Okay. Okay, just a little play. All right. Sorry, I just wanted to show how the adjustments work on this knife. It's a little weird. Um, so we have it adjusted, and Jesus. There we go. Sorry. Yeah, it's good. Centering got better, which is awesome. Tighten that down and almost centered up all the way. And we have basically no play. I think what I'm feeling is this lock bar moving. It kind of like, you can move it around a little bit. And it does move because it comes off, right? So you think that's all that is. So anyway, um, action, right? I think that's where we were. It's interesting. You got to wrist it out and then you pull the strap. It's all about this strap. It's a strap lock, a.k.a. the scorpion lock from Demco. And essentially, if you don't know, you just pull this off and there's a bar on there. So you want it to um, back off so that you can rotate this, right? And then it falls into this slot right here when it closes so or opens. So watch that bar. Drops into that slot and now... You're basically rock solid, and the more pressure you put down, which is what you do when you hold a knife and cut with it, you're basically putting, you're basically making the lock stronger by doing that because it can't come, it has to come off that slot to then close, right? Um, so with no pressure on it, let's see if I can see if it rocks. No rock at all. You're not going to move it. Andrew Demko makes the strongest locks on the planet, in my opinion. Um, have no fear when you have a Demko in your hand, honestly. Um, and then to close it, you pull that bar back so that it comes out of that slot. And then you kind of just throw it down, right? And then it whips around. And the only issue I see is when it's closed, you have to sort of back off the strap to open it because it needs to push that strap back a little. So if you're bearing down on the knife, on the strap, while you're opening it, you're causing that to lock up. So I have to kind of loosen my grip to let it break that. And then see, sometimes I, I lock it up or whatever. Um, so I just found using a little wrist to chuck it out and uh, chuck it closed is the way to go. So you just kind of chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, right? I'm um, sure you could unstrap it and chuck it out, maybe. Yeah, see, I never did it that way, though. So the more I played with it off camera and such, the more fun I had with it. It really is unique and interesting. And I think I would like to have a, a custom version of this. The Cold Steel one is crap. Um, but this is fun. It's kind of fun in its own way compared to the 8020. Uh, but that's really all it is to me, guys, is sort of a fidgety thing. And it's just such a monster of a knife to be a fidget toy that it's just not really worth it. And I do prefer the shark lock because it's just a little more fun having the tab to pull. Um, and it's easier to flick and stuff like reverse flick. You know, I can do it with this, but again, I'm just like sort of wristing it and I'm putting pressure on the bar when I do it. You know, I don't know. So anyway... That is the 8015 uh, Custom MG. I really like it. I do. I think it's cool. From my first sort of video till now, um, I really have kind of come a long way on it. So that's the uh, 8015. And then uh, here's one of Ian's knives. This is the G-Frame from Real Steel. Uh, this was a White Mountain Knives exclusive. It was like 100 bucks. It comes in S35VN. Uh, it's got this sort of satin grind on it. And um, I did first impressions on all these, so I don't want to go nuts here. Uh, let's just rip through it. Aesthetics, I think it's a good-looking knife. I like how thin it is. It's definitely an O-Stop Hell design. You can tell, yep. Um, and it's nice. The titanium and the satin, it goes really well together with the um, wire clip, which is reversible, but I tried reversing it, and... 
I was on the verge of stripping screws, so I just let it go. Uh, I'm sure you could figure it out with some heat or whatever. Uh, but it has this fuller that is sort of useless. Uh, you can't, like, flick it or anything. I don't think, no. And it has this flipper with some good jimping. But the detent's too light on it. Uh, I'll get to that in action. But aesthetics, it's nice. It's thin. It's a good little uh, sort of gentlemanly knife. But you still get a good enough amount of blade to be usable, you know. Uh, has a decent edge on it, for sure. Uh, so ergonomics, let's get into that. Um, it feels good. It's very neutral, right? It's just very neutral in hand. You don't really want to choke up like this, but you could. But it's solid. I mean, it's really just a good, solid, neutral handle. It's a little thin, but for me, that's fine. This jimping is actually really useful, even though it's really uh, tightly spaced. It works well for me. Uh, so I do enjoy the ergos. The flipper tab is comfortable. Uh, so no issues on ergos there. Uh, carry, I had to carry it right-handed because I couldn't flip the clip, which sucked. But, again, you could probably figure that out. But, uh, the clip does work really good. Um, it's a little bit, uh, mushy. See that? Just kind of sliding all over the place. And that's be Oop. that's because it's too long. Like, it's just too long and flexible. They could have cut this down to here and put, like, a, I don't know. What's a knife that has it, like, the, um... The stinger here. You know, they could have just put a little clip on it. Like, why did you need a giant wire clip? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. That's one thing I love about the stinger. Um, so, but it does carry well. It's just a little obnoxious how big that clip is. Uh, and it's super thin, lightweight, all that stuff, right? Um, there isn't internal milling, but it doesn't need it. This thing weighs nothing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, cutting is good. I mean, it's a pretty thin stock. It's got a good flat grind on it. it. does have this fuller or blood groove. I don't think that would cause you issues. It didn't cause me any. I mean, all I did was uh, cut a couple shipping labels, paper, and maybe a package, right, uh, when I had this in pocket. Now, because of how long it is, it's kind of annoying for my labels because I want to get up here, but I'm just getting hit in the wrist with the blade or with the handle because of how long the damn thing is to get up to the tip you see where that handle is just getting me so it's not the best for that uh, because of the blade shape so for me it's not really something i want i'd want it to be a warning or a sheep's foot with the tip down so i can just right um so yeah but otherwise i mean it's gonna do all the things you need it to do for standard edc it's, it's it feels really thin guys it really does um and i've noticed real steel doing a good job on their grinds um and their edges honestly it feels really good um sounds it's okay five or six pretty muted on both but it's got a decent black nothing crazy nothing to write home about you know what i mean sounds better on the clothes honestly so there's that uh action and that's where it falls short it just is a little too light on that detent um you know most of the time it's not gonna fail but it just isn't satisfying like, I want to have a little bit more pressure there or resistance so that I feel some kind of satisfaction when it flips out. I'm just not getting that from it. So, that's kind of the issue I have with this guy. The closing action drops really well and it shakes down really well. Um, there's no play at all. And it is on bearings, of course. And the centering is dead on. So... Everything else is good, and I almost still like it, even though that detent's light. But if this detent was just a little stronger, I would be raving about this knife, guys. So uh, take that for whatever it's worth. But that's the real steel G-frame based on the G-slip design, which was a slip joint. This is a frame lock. G frame. So, uh, White Mountain Knives exclusive. They may still be available. You can use code Lefty10 
at White Mountain Knives for 10% off your orders and free shipping in the U.S. So there you go. That is the G-Frame. Next up, let's look at the Tucson TS120. Ouch. 129. So this is one that I took apart and cleaned for Jared because it is it was dirty, guys. It was pretty dirty. And I've gotten a lot of comments since that video saying, mine drops shut completely. Mine's completely fall shut. And I don't know if people know what drop shut is uh, in my terminology. Because to me, drop shut is... Uh, it literally falls shut. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is the MBK sprocket, and that's drop shut, right? I'm not doing anything but turning the knife, and it's dropping, right? All right, that one was a bad example. There you go. <laughs> See? Um, whereas this, it drops to there, but then... Um, shaking right now i'm not saying you're wrong i'm just saying that's what i call drop shut and if your knife drops all the way like that other one then that's awesome i mean i wish this thing did that i just tightened it because i felt some blade play now there's none and i bet it's not even gonna yeah uh, the action on this guy is just not up to what i would expect uh from tucson to be honest we got a little bit of play again and now you know, so anyway, let's talk about it. Aesthetics. It's got the bird thing going on, right? It even has a little bit of a hook at the end almost. It looks like kind of like a hawksbill. And I love a hawksbill. So I love the blade shape, sort of. I'm not a big fan of the keyhole design. I thought it was unique at first, but it's kind of ugly. And overall, it gives this sort of a toucan look. Uh, I always equate knives to birds. So like today, I'm carrying the um, Axon from Vero. And according to my brother, uh, Brandon Thrasher, this is a lamb's foot or modified lamb's foot, which is cool. I didn't know any of the stuff he taught me the other day. Loved that video, Brandon. Uh, but anyway, this one reminds me of a pelican. Just see the beak and everything of the pelican. Uh, so you have a pelican. You have a toucan, right? That's kind of my thing. That's how I look at knives. So I think it looks pretty good, actually, overall. I don't think it's the most beautiful knife ever, but I think it's it's definitely aesthetically pleasing. You have carbon fiber, which is really nice carbon fiber. It's sort of a standard carbon fiber, but it looks better than most companies do it. Uh, even Riot, honestly, they killed it on this. Uh, you have this satin grind. Uh, it's M390. And I think it's a night morning. I think that's what that means. You have a two sun clip that works well. It's got good retention. I don't like any of their clips really ever, but um, this one's pretty usable. Um, it has micro milling over on the scales over here, which is nice. It has a front flipper with jimping. Doesn't go all the way around, and the jimping stops a little bit early, which is weird. Um, not my favorite, right? I don't know, just, I'm never good at that, but left-handed, I don't know, I just wish the jimping went around because I feel like I'm coming off sometimes, I'm not getting the leverage all the way through, but it is pretty good, the detent is actually pretty solid on this, um, sorry, I skipped ahead of a bunch of shit, Ugh. it's another reason I don't like this thing, Ergo's, this is where it kind of falls short for me, a lot of people rave about this knife, but the ergos just, for me, don't work. Now, right-handed back here feels pretty good. And then you can kind of choke up onto this flat situation, right? Uh, left-handed, this hurts. Like, I'm getting, I don't know if I'm getting this sort of ridge right here or this gap sort of in between my fingers and it's squeezing down on or the clip somehow. It just kind of hurts, honestly, to squeeze down on this. And then, of course, you can choke up. And that does feel pretty good. But again, if I'm going to compare it to something like, say, my Axon, this feels incredibly comfortable back here. And then I have a long enough flat up here that I'm just like, oh, man, I love it. Where this just doesn't feel quite as long. And it's good, but, like, it's no Axon. Know what I'm saying? 
And I love this knife. Sorry, I don't know why I'm telling you that. Anyway, uh, I did see there's some weird shit going on right here. Can you see the sort of like divot in the scale? Oh, it's over here too. What the hell is that? It's almost like it's there for a clip or something. I don't know what the fuck that is. That's weird. But you see that divot in the scale? It's on this side too. It's hard to see because of the carbon fiber shining. But you have a lanyard hole, which is whatever. Um, so I took this apart for Jared because it was dirty as hell. Uh, cutting is good, guys. Uh, it comes down to a good edge. It's got a decently tall blade with a uh, uh, flat grind. And it's thin to begin with. Uh, it's got a good tip. Again, it kind of has a hawk's bill. It kind of crooks at the end there. And that's what I need, guys. That's what I love, right? Bang. Cutting shipping labels like a beast. Cutting open packages. Uh, cutting cardboard. Like, this is just my blade shape, right? I just love a warning sheep's foot, lamb's foot, whatever you want to call it. I love this style of blade. Um, so I'm a big fan. I don't care if it has a little belly in it or whatever. I just like a nice straight edge like that with a low tip. That's what I want, that low tip. Um, so cutting's phenomenal, guys. Uh, I went over carry, didn't I? Uh, Tucson clip, yeah. Uh, sounds. Oops, sorry. It's okay. Nothing really on the close and the open. I don't know. Gives you a little something. Five or six, maybe six out of ten. Action. So, first up, we are dead centered after disassembly. And here's the rub. Left-handed lock bar. It's a bitch, right? So, you got to be up here on the pivot. Or you got to be down here on the clip low enough on the frame lock. Uh, left-handed, you can easily thumb flick it. You can front flip it because the lock bar is on the other side. I always find it's easier to front flip a knife. Front flip, front flip a knife lefty than righty. So there you go. Uh, right-handed, nice thumb flick. I do like the whole design for uh, the flicking. Because of that keyhole, you kind of like slide in up to the top. And then you can uh, thwack it out, right? Good thumb flick, right-handed. Good reverse flick, right-handed. And then you have the front flip. So it works great right-handed. You just, the lefty reverse flick is a little wanting. Um, and then again, the closing action, just not quite there, right? I mean, it's good. Most people are probably going to be satisfied with it. Um, but you do have to back off that pivot. I mean, we got a decent amount of play just to get this. And most people are telling me there's just free drops, which is crazy, right? And I think they're talking about that. I don't know. You tell me in the comments, guys. Anybody who has one of these, when you say yours free drops or drop shut, do you just mean this and then it shakes down? Or is yours like you let go here and it just goes down? Because I'd be interested to hear that because... Uh, this action is for sure good, guys. Like, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying, from everything I heard about this knife, I just expected a little bit more out of it, you know? I will say the lock bar is a little bit sort of wobbly. It just doesn't feel all that... I don't know how to explain that. It's just easily moving it around and shit. Um... Yeah, I don't really know what I mean by that, but hopefully somebody gets what I'm talking about. Anyway, that is the Tucson TS-129. Definitely a cool knife. Uh, I definitely see why a bunch of you love that one. And then last, we have the Wingman EDC Ferris. Again, loaned in by Ian. And uh, me and this knife just don't love each other very much, but I can appreciate it, right? Aesthetically, this fat carbon is gorgeous. Uh, the proprietary pivots look cool, but annoy the shit out of me. Uh, I don't like the single screw clip. The clip mounts, the screw goes through there and then into here. So you get a little bit of wiggle. I don't like that. It is a sort of sub frame lock or a frame lock, whatever you want to call it, with a scale over it. It has a kick stop mechanism. So no flipper tab pops out. See there. 
is the flipper tab. As I close it, it sort of pops it back out, right? Um, it also acts as the stop pin. See there, there's a seam right there, and that's where that kick stop starts. This is an integral, actually. Titanium integral with these carbon fiber onlays or whatever you want to call them. Absolutely beautiful build, right? Um, now, this harpoon blade, not my thing. Cool compound grind, but it just seems really thick, you know, because it's a sort of short blade. The hollow grind starts here, and it's not that deep. So you just end up with a sort of thick feeling edge um, that also doesn't feel very sharp. It is. I mean, it cuts stuff and everything. Um, it's got a decent tip, but it's really dainty. Um, so aesthetically, uh, overall, not my thing, but I can appreciate the materials, right? Um, ergos. This is also an issue for me. I, I just can't get comfortable in this handle. It's just too small and curvy and weird if you climb up here it gets better for sure uh so i don't know if it's meant to be held up here like the uh mach 3 mach 1 are uh, it's pretty comfortable but still not anything i would love to hold uh you can pinch grip it obviously but you have this sort of upward tip which sucks now you do have a tanto um but that tip is really basically belly <laughs> it's not even sharp really so, I mean, you could easily probably cut through tape or anything you needed to with that, no problem. But if you want to use this tip, you know, you got to do this thing. So, the pinch grip kind of is useless. You could flip it over and do it, I guess, but I didn't try that. Um, so, you know, cutting's okay, but just it's going to be thick. And, you know, I mean, look at that stock. And then look how short the blade is. It's just not going to come down to a super thin edge. This is made by Riot. Uh, carry was fine. I do like the clip. They do a good job with their clips. I just don't like that it wiggles. Uh, it's not very heavy. Uh, it is an integral, but I mean, it's obviously all milled out in there, so it's not bad. It is heavier than you'd think for the size though, right? Um, sounds. Awesome. Definitely a 7 or 8 out of 10. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. And that's because of the kickstop. I mean, the integral and the kickstop, usually integrals are muted. This one has some, some good acoustic. That's that kickstop kicking in, smacking the blade, then the blade shooting out, right? And then when it comes back down, you get the disengage, and then you hear the blade tap the kickstop and then close. So you kind of get this double effect both times. Kickstop, blade, blade, uh, lockup. Blade, kickstop, blade, close, right? I just, I really like it. It's one thing I love about my kickstop Apache. Uh, so the acoustics are great. Now, the action. The detent is dialed. There's no failing it. They do a great job with these kickstop. It's a Lee William kickstop mechanism, by the way. It's licensed. So so to keep that in mind. I don't know who the designer of this knife is. See the little bear on there? I don't know who that is. I probably should have looked that up. Sorry. Um, and they don't say on the box. I don't know why they don't do that. Um, anyway, the action. The detent is good. This flipper tab is just not for me. It, the jimping's not strong enough, so I slip off a lot. Um, I'll just blatantly miss it sometimes, right? I'm just like, flip. So that happens, but the D10 is solid and it's not too strong. It feels great, honestly. Closing action. So the lock bar has this little chamfer right here. You get in there and you kind of just have to go in like this. You don't want to go across. You want to go in and push over, right? And once you get used to that, it's fine. The access is good. Um, it drops to your nail, and man, it's close to drop shut, right? You're just giving it a little bit of shake, and she's down. So action's really good. Um, I just am not a big fan of the flipper tab on this thing. Um, you can get used to it, obviously, and it's fun to fidget with like this. Works great left-handed. Um, it's flipper only, so you have that, right? But yeah, overall, definitely a cool knife, just not... 
for me personally, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, so if you're into this, uh, it is expensive. I think they're like 450 bucks, you know, for, it's an integral made by Riot, fat carbon, M390, all the good stuff. This is what you're going to be looking at. So that's the Wingman EDC Ferris. Real Steel G-Frame. Thanks to E&G for those. Demco AD15 MG Custom. And the Tucson TS129. Thank you to Jared Neve from Neve's Knives for those. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in for the rapid 35-minute reviews. <laughs> I absolutely love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.